I want to give all the praise, all the glory, all the honor unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahushai, Bahashem, Rekakwadash. Double honors goes out to the other apostles of Great Millstone for teaching me the truth. Also, I want to acknowledge all the Akyam who are pushing the truth with sincerity throughout the four corners of the earth. And uh, I'm going to just call this um, <clears throat> this uh, lesson, I'm going to call it the burden of Jeremiah. And, uh, you know, sometimes when you really uh, examine the work we do and everything, you know, and even the, in the past, the prophets of the past, you, you realize that, you know, if the Lord calls a man to be a prophet, it, he's going to have a, uh, a, it's a burden on him, you know, which is good in the end, but it's, 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 it can be burdensome, right? When we, when we, uh, talk about coming into this truth, we, we speak on, um, basically being, being made hard, being made men, right? Me, having to endure, which that word endure, it means to be made hard. So, <clears throat> The reason is, is because it's it's a burdensome thing, you know. You, you, when you really look at this overall picture of all the prophets, you know, the prophets uh, of old and the prophets who are in the re regeneration, reincarnation, prophets of this age that we're in right now, it's a uh, it's a burden, you know. Um, and real quick, let me just. Uh, let me just look up that word burden real quick. <clears throat> the scripture. Let me see. <laughs> I'm going to grab a couple precepts before I jump into this Jeremiah 20. But we're going to go to Isaiah, we'll go to 13 and 1, and it says, The burden of Babylon, which Isaiah the son of Amos did see, All right? It's Babylon's burden, yes, and this is, you know, both, both ancient Babylon and, uh, you know, the daughter of Babylon, both are burdensome places. And, you know, the prophets who are who prophesied against ancient Babylon, the prophets who prophesy against um, the daughter of Babylon, America, right? Basically, like I say, it's it's it could be burdensome, right? <clears throat> but let me uh, let me see if I can get another. <laughs> Let's go to Nahum. And remember, a lot of these places that I'm reading about, like ancient Babylon and, and the one I'm going to read about right here in uh, Nahum. Nahum 1 and 1. It says, this is how this chapter starts out. It says, the burden of Nineveh, the book of the vision of Nahum, the Elkoshite. So Nahum, the prophet, you understand that if it's, if, if there's, um, a place like Nineveh, Babylon, and then the daughter of Babylon, America. <clears throat> These chapters are starting off with that word, the burden. <laughs> All right. Let's go to Habakkuk real quick and see the same thing. Let's see. So it's going to be... Um, <clears throat> It's, it's a burden, right, to prophesy. <clears throat> so it's nothing new under the sun. The prophets of old were, you know, they had a burden because they had to prophesy the burden of the places of their respective places where they were, where they were living. <clears throat> Same thing with us. 
you know, this is the burden of, of America, Babylon, America. But guess what? It's it's it becomes a <clears throat> a burden for us prophets because we you know we're in the midst of all these abominations that we see every day, and <clears throat> so yeah, it's it's a burden, some thing. That's why not everyone can be a prophet. Okay, we go to Habakkuk. We'll go to one and one. This is the first verse. Of all these prophets books that I'm reading It says the burden Which Habakkuk the prophet did see Okay And um, Let's go to Malachi One and one It says The burden of the word Of Yahweh to Israel by Malachi <laughs> And, um, you know, even though it's a burden, it's something that uh, we can deal with, right? Even though we, we have the, a burden of prophesying against many countries and many nations, and that could be burdensome, right? It's still, it's still, uh, how was the word I'm trying to find? It's still within our... Um, ability, you know. Yes, it's a it's a, a burden right now, but it's. Let me bring to mind this scripture. Let's see. <clears throat> bring to mind uh, Corinthians. Let me grab that real quick. Second Corinthians. Four and seventeen. <clears throat> for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. You see that? So it's a light affliction. It's something that, even though it's burdensome, it's not. It's not too much for us. And if we are the men of Yahweh Bashem Yoshai, then we'll be able to endure these these burden. This burdensome report, you know, that we're because again we're prophesying against nations and kingdoms, right? So let me uh, let me <clears throat> let me get the definition of burden real quick. It says a load, typically a heavy one. <laughs> you see, <laughs> so this is a heavy load we have, right? This is not just something anybody can do. If everybody can do it, then, you know, well, I, I should say if it was, if it wasn't a burden to be a prophet, if it wasn't a heavy thing to do, a load, typically a heavy one, well, then usually, you know, there would be a lot more men prophesying, right? So, you know, the prophets, we got to have thick skin, man. We got to have, uh, you know, we got to be men. You can't just be some soft dude, emotional guy coming into this truth and, and dealing with the the job that we have at hand, right? Prophesying against our own wicked people and prophesying against the heathen, you know? So anyway, I think I spoke enough on that word burden and, and just wanted to show you the example of the prophets. That Their book starts out with the burden. This is a burden, man. A heavy load. What we do is this is heavy. This is heavy duty work, man. Like we're, you know, that's why, why it's called work. Let me, let me grab the original chapter I was going to read in. But yeah, it brings me to this chapter, Jeremiah 20. And I'm going to start at 7. <clears throat> and let's read it. It says, O Yahweh, thou hast deceived me, and I was deceived. And remember, Jeremiah had just, he was just finishing up prophesying against, against his own people, right? And the two thirds, the, the wicked. The wickedness of Israel was uh, was in abundance, 
and Yahweh put the spirit on Jeremiah to prophesy against the people, right, the Israelites, and telling them, hey, you're going to go into, you're going to get carried away captive into Babylon, ancient Babylon. And that's what we're telling these people, you know. We're telling them, hey, you're, you're in America, Babylon, and if you don't repent, if you're an Israelite, you're going to get destroyed and you're going to get killed. You're going to be a living sacrifice on uh, the day of the Lord, you know, which, you know, has to deal with World War Three and the and nuclear missiles, chariot fire. We're telling them if they don't repent, our own people, they're going to be destroyed, right? So it's not a good report for them because they they look at the prophets some type of way, right? They don't, they're like, they, they despise the prophets, man. You know, if, to, if you're a true prophet, you're going to be despised by by the uh, the average, you know, Babylonian. <laughs> the heathen, they have no hope, right? But the Israelites, they they despise us. The heathen despises us. So we're not a we're like like Elder Gabar always says. We're not doing this. We're not here to make friends, you know. So anyway, let me keep reading. Oh Yahweh, thou hast deceived me, and I was deceived. Thou art stronger than I, and hast prevailed. I am in derision daily. Everyone mocketh me. For since I spake, I cried out, I cried violence and spoil, because the word of Yahweh was made a reproach unto me and a derision daily. So Jeremiah, is, he's um, he's basically he's complaining to Yahweh. He's like, man, ever since I had you to put this, you put the spirit on me to prophesy and speak against these people. You know, they've been make, looking at me like I'm a shame and doing. I mean, they look at me in derision, right? It's like, <clears throat> you know, and, and derision, it means contemptuous, ridicule, ridicule, or mockery. mockery. Do they mock us, right? Um, you know, the true prophets of Yahweh Bashem Yoshai, you're going to get mocked and ridiculed and scoffed. Then Peter tells you that. Let's get that real quick. Second Peter. <laughs> I remember I was uh, watching this guy on TikTok. He was doing a like a Christian TikTok Bible breakdown or something, and he he was speaking about the prophets, and I I made a comment. I said, "Hey, the true prophets are despised, and we're you know we're going to be mocked and hated." And he couldn't understand it, you know. He thought I was being wicked by, you know, he thought I was just trying to, you know, interrupt his little uh, program and telling him those things. When I was telling him the truth, according to the scripture, right? And at that point, you just, when you're, when you're in this truth, you just realize, like, oh, these people, they can't get it. So this is Second Peter 3 and 3. <clears throat> It says, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts, right? So, the scoffers and the mockers, they're going to come, right? That's part of prophecy. And if you, are being, if you aren't being scoffed and mocked, then maybe you're not, you don't have the truth. You don't have the true message because the true message from Yahweh is a burden, and just like we're reading in Jeremiah, you know, he says, hey, I've been made a reproach unto me in derision daily. We're a spectacle, the scripture speaks about, you know. Let's get that real quick. Get that real quick. First Corinthians uh, four and nine. It says, "For I think that the Most High hath sent forth hath sent forth us the apostles last, 
as it were appointed to death, for we are made a spectacle unto the world and to the angels and to men. All right? Let's get that definition for spectacle. Oops. So like, yeah. Uh, it says a visually striking performance or display, right? So when we're out there, we're a spectacle to this world, and that's why they want to, you know, though, like if it's a visually striking display, which we are, people, that's why people will be across the street from us, like looking at our camp, like trying to figure out what we're doing and who we are, and, you know, it's like sometimes it catches people off guard, you know, when they see our camps. You know, they're like, what's what's going on over here, you know? So it's it's what it is, so, you know. <clears throat> That's what it is. We're a spectacle. And, and it's a burden. It can become a burden. Well, not become, it is a burden. I mean, why? Because we're basically going against the grain, right? And that's why when we're reading uh, Jeremiah here, it's like, let's see, Jeremiah 20. And I'm at verse 9. It says... Then I said, I will not make mention of him nor speak any more in his name, but his word was in my heart or my mind, right? Come on, get down. All right. So, uh, uh, uh. this is Jeremiah. He says, Then I said, I will not make mention of him nor speak any more in his name, but his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay. Right? So that's how it is for the prophets. His word is in our heart, is in our mind. Right? So, like, even when we're having just regular conversations, sometimes, you know, we may not plan on prophesying or, do, you know, we, we, we're not, you know, we're not trying to talk about the word or the truth, but because it's in our, it's burning in our heart and in our mind, we end up, we always go back to this truth, man, at the end of the day, right? It really reminds me of this verse real quick. It says, Joshua 1 and 8, the, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, and that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. All right? So again, we read it for our light affliction. You know, it can't be compared to the glory that we're going to come into if we are those men. Same thing here, you know. The, the book, the, the book, we should always be meditating, thinking about it, you know, and it should never depart from our mouth. And really, you know, that's what Jeremiah is saying here, that the word was in his, and it was burning in him. He basically, he was like us, you know, we were like him, I should say, you know, we're like Jeremiah. This, this truth is constantly burning inside us and it's like something that just has to come out right but here, let me read it again in verse 9 then i said i will not mention of him nor speak any more in his name but his word was in mine heart or my mind as a burning fire shut up in my bones and i was weary with forbearing and could not stay right for i heard the defaming of many fear on every side right they're they def defaming which is like uh, you know making our name look bad 
you know, the, which is the damage of the good reputation of someone. It's like slander, right? This is what they do. They'll talk shit about us, whether it's your family members or people you 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 knew you once consider friends or whatever, you know. Um, reports say they and we will report it. All my familiars watched for my halting, saying. Peradventure he will be enticed, and we shall prevail against him, and we shall take our revenge on him. See? So this truth, hey, the two-thirds and the heathen, they start feeling some type of way against the, the prophets. You know, they become to a point where they'll literally despise the true prophets of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. People you thought were down for you, hey, they, they'll come in, and especially during Jacob's trouble, they're going to try and kill you, man. Or they're going to sell you out, you know. They're like, hey, we know where he is. We know where he's hiding out. To Esau, you know. 11. But Yahweh is with me as a mighty, terrible one. That's what we have in our favor, though, brothers. You know, if we're those men, then we just keep this fire burning. Keep, you know, stay, staying hot with this truth, you know. Because remember, in Revelation, Yahweh Shai said he's... He's not dealing with no lukewarm prophet, right? You got to be on fire for this truth, man. He's not dealing with lukewarm. He said he'd rather have you hot or cold than lukewarm, you know? But again, Yahweh is our refuge. Yahweh is... That's what... Well, let's read it. But Yahweh is with me as a mighty, terrible one. Therefore, my persecutors shall stumble and they shall not prevail. They shall be greatly ashamed, for they shall not prosper. Their everlasting confusion shall never be forgotten. You see? So these two-thirds and these heathen, they can hate all they want. They can scoff, mock all they want. But Yahweh's got our back, man. At the end of the day, that's the most important thing. Even if we have to go through some fire, go through some drama, whatever it is, guess what? We got to keep our faith with Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. 12. But O oh, Yahweh of hosts that triest the righteous and seest the reins and the heart, let me see thy vengeance on them. For unto thee I have opened my cause. Right? So that's the same thing, way we feel. We're always talking about that. Like, man, we want to see Esau his demise. We want to see the two-thirds demise. We praise Yahweh when our enemies are being destroyed before our eyes, right? We, it says, that's the same spirit Jeremiah was in. He said, let me see thy vengeance on them. The ones who come against this truth, man, we, we pray for the day that we get to see our enemies fall, our enemies be destroyed by Yahweh Bashem Yomashai. Right? For unto thee have I opened my cause, you see? Verse 13. Sing unto Yahweh, praise ye Yahweh, for he hath delivered the soul of the poor from the hand of the evildoers. And the poor are the Israelites, all right? Let me see. I'm finishing up here. Um. Cursed be the man who, who brought, or I'm sorry, cursed be the day wherein I was born. Let not the day wherein my mother bare me be blessed. So Jeremiah, this burden became so great. He was cursing the day he was born. He was cursing the day that, you see, he was just, this, the burden was, you know, catching up to him. Because remember, he's in the flesh. Yeah, he was a, a, a significant prophet. But hey, he was still in the flesh, you know. He's cursing the day he was born, just like Job did. Cursed be the man who brought tidings to my father, saying, A man-child is born unto thee, making him very glad. And let that man be as the cities which Yahweh overthrew and repented not. And let him hear the cry in the morning and the shouting at noontide. He saw he was so burdensome and worn down. He was cursing even the man who told his dad that, hey, he... <laughs> You're going to have a, a son, you know. Verse 17, Because he slew me not from the womb, or that my mother might have been my grave, and her womb to be always great with me. Wherefore came I forth out of the womb to see labor and sorrow, that my days should be consumed with shame. You see that? 
So this this burden was obviously getting to Jeremiah. And you know, brothers, we're doing this same thing that Jeremiah is doing. We're prophesying against many nations and kingdoms. But you know, really at the end of the day, we got to remember why we're doing this, you see? It's because we have something to greater to look for forward to. And you know, even though we have burdens and even though, you know, doing this work can be burdensome at times, you know, just keep pushing, man. You see? So with that, I want to give all the praise, all the glory, all the honor unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweshai, Bahashem, Rekak Wadash. Double honors goes out to the elder apostles of Great Millstone for teaching me the truth. Also, I want to acknowledge the Akiam who are pushing the truth with sincerity throughout the four corners of the, world, the earth. Um, Shalom.